Welcome to phase diagrams. In this lesson, we're going to look at a kind of diagram called a phase diagram that shows the relationship between the temperature and pressure of a substance and its state of matter. This kind of diagram can tell you under which conditions certain states of matter can even exist. So for this lesson, we're going to look at the phase diagram for water. Now each substance has its very own phase diagram, has a unique phase diagram, and this one happens to be the phase diagram for water. A couple things to point out before we get started on what's going on in this graph. First of all, we have pressure on one axis and we have temperature on the other axis. Secondly, we have a line that extends across the graph at 101.3 kilopascals. That represents the standard pressure. Now the lines or the curves in the phase diagram separate the area into three regions. We have the solid region over here, which is ice for water. We have the liquid region in the middle, which is just called water. And we have the gas region over here, which we call vapor. Now the way this diagram works is that if you pick any set of conditions, so any set of pressure and temperature, it's going to give you a point somewhere on this map. So let's say I have a point right here. It's at some pressure and some temperature. I know that at that temperature and pressure, water will be a liquid because this dot, this point, is in the liquid space. If I had instead a condition down here, so some temperature with what looks like a very low pressure, it looks like I'm going to have a gas for my substance. So that's generally how this diagram works. Now the lines mean something special. The lines represent the set of conditions where a phase change starts to happen. So let's look at a point on one of these lines, for example. Let's take the point right here. So at 101.3 kilopascals of pressure, at this point is where ice becomes water, or where water becomes ice if we're going the other direction. So this way would be melting, and this way would be freezing at this point. And we can figure out what temperature this change happens at by just dropping down a vertical line and reading what the temperature is at that point. Now in this case, we know that water freezes at zero degrees Celsius. So this point here is zero degrees Celsius. If we look at this point on this other line over here, that is on the line between the liquid and gas areas. So we know that this direction from a liquid to gas is vaporization, and in this direction we have gas to a liquid, which is condensation. So those two phase changes also occur at a particular temperature at standard pressure. And that particular temperature for boiling or for condensation, we know is 100 degrees Celsius. Now there's a third line segment we haven't talked about yet, and that's the one down here. So this condition where a solid becomes directly a gas or a gas directly becomes a solid, we know that sublimation and deposition, those phase changes. Notice how it's not near standard pressure at all. This sublimation area, this entire line segment here that represents sublimation, cannot occur at standard pressure. For sublimation of water to occur, the pressure has to be very low, and also the temperature needs to be very low, because we can see it's right around zero degrees. There's a few more points of interest on this graph. One is this point right here, where all three of these lines intersect, and that point is called the triple point. The triple point is the pressure and temperature at which all three phases can exist simultaneously. So at this one specific condition of pressure and temperature, you can have ice, water, and vapor all at the same time. Another very special point on this graph is up here. You'll notice that this particular line that represents the boiling points at various pressures or the condensation points at various pressures, doesn't go all the way off the graph. It doesn't continue on like this one on the left. And that's because there exists something called a critical point. The critical point is defined as a set of temperature and pressure that we call the critical temperature and the critical pressure, which just means that the pressure and temperature values at this point are referred to as the critical pressure and the critical temperature. All this means is that if you go higher than this temperature, so if you all go past this temperature, 
it's impossible for a liquid to exist. So we call it the critical point, because past this point, you can't have a liquid regardless of what pressure you have. And in fact, when you get into this region of critical pressure and critical temperature, when you go past that, you get a new sort of state that's called a supercritical fluid. So this diagram conveys a lot of information at once about a particular substance. But in general, it's important to remember that the line on the left over here represents all of the possible melting points for water at various pressures, whereas the line over here represents all of the possible boiling points for water at various pressures. And the third line segment represents all of the possible sublimation points at various pressures. That wraps up our lesson on phase diagrams. Write down any questions you have in your notes and bring them with you to class.